Hello, anime addicts. As you know, for the first three months of 2021, we will be donating 50% of all support that we receive during that time to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And now we have a donor who is willing to match your contributions dollar for dollar. So every contribution you make goes twice as far, twice as much help. So get in there on aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon, or you can even click the donate link on top of the homepage. And again, 50% is going to go to a great cause to supporting the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So don't delay. Head over to aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon, or click the donate link on top of the homepage. And now, time to start the podcast. Get ready! You're about to listen to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Make your anime addiction worse at aaapodcast.com. And now, here are your anime addicts. Hello, and welcome to the 563rd episode of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. I am joined today by a captain of our ship. It is Captain Mitsugi, who is wearing a captain's hat. Burp, burp, all aboard Anime Addicts Express. I'm excited to be here, guys. How is your, your rum? My rum, right. it's turned, <laughs> by God, my rum has turned red. What's going on? <laughs> mm, it's so good. Oh, that does not sound good to me. You're going to get scurvy. <laughs> scurvy of that R, then scurvy it be. Well, he's really playing it. Also, it's my. It also, it's <laughs> minus eight in Denver, or it was this morning. So we are trying. To, we're just trying to stay warm, people. It's a survival. It's survival at this point. And his rival in the war between how cold is it is Mason. <laughs> how are you doing today, Mason? Is it cold no, there? How cold? It's pretty cold. It's like one degree, but I think Mitz is winning with like negative eight or so. He's he's got me blown out of the water right now. I'm just thinking over here. Has there ever been like a pickle and monster energy drink collab? And Mitz, would you drink it? I would certainly try it. I, I try all the new flavors. The last one was a watermelon flavor. I didn't care for it much. So they can't Let's all be, be winners. Mason. He was the one who uh, said that he'd be willing at a certain price to swallow a live goldfish. So there you go. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm a man with 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 no morals. Wow. Everybody has a price, you know, and that was on Hobby Addicts in case you need to hear that conversation. <laughs> well, I didn't. That was I will not <laughs> be swallowing any goldfishes for any price. Well, let's get back to uh, our introduction here. Uh, this is the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast where we are dedicated to making your anime addiction so much worse. And it's always good to fall into addiction with a friend. So make sure you tell them oh, uh, yes. all about us. You can find us on social media at AAA Podcast. Uh, you can find us on Twitch, AA Podcast. We are live every Sunday, 5 p.m. EST. You can find us on Facebook and, of course, our Discord. You can just go to aapodcast.com, and it's very easy. Just click the Discord button, and you'll be brought to our our little home there where we all fight each other. <laughs> you know, we don't really give enough credit to, to the power of word of mouth. If every anime addict we had told told at least one person about the podcast and... Each of the each of those people told one person. But after f six or seven iterations, we will have conquered the whole world. Okay, so tell a friend. You know, do a good thing. <laughs> and I and I and then uh, tell me you did it on Discord, and I will and I will thank you very much and just to say nice things to you. So anime Oscars voting is still going on, probably for this week, probably until the end of this week only. You know, I know it's redundant. Oh my God, anime Oscars again. You know, some people haven't voted. You know, I know. I know about how many listeners we have, and I know how many people have voted, and I know a lot of you are sla you're, a lot of you are dragging your feet. So you know, I'm not pleased about it. So I'm gonna need to see some more uh, pick. I'm gonna pick those feet up, get over there to the website, click the banner in the middle, go vote. You know, you gotta vote for your favorite anime people. You watch it all the time. I know you have a favorite, so get over there and do it. That's about it. Indeed. Aye aye, Captain. <laughs> Um, now let's head into our episode summary for today. We have a little game to play for our main topic, um, which we are all very excited about. Oh, yeah. It's something a little bit new, um, where we'll be having two people on the show competing against each other, and they have a romantic relationship. So this will be interesting. Mm. 
<laughs> I like it. <laughs> we'll talk more about it, how that's all going to work in a little bit. And also we have the final round of winter 2021 impressions. Just a few of our last shows that we were watching and um, trying to figure out what will be locked in as our last show for the season. Um, but of course, we still have our listeners' choice uh, poll, which will be coming out in a little bit, so you guys can get in your input as well. It's probably going to be up by the time this episode goes out in the middle of the week. So, if you're hearing this on iTunes or wherever you listen from, go check for the listener choice poll. It's probably up. So, mm. okay. Wow. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, let's get started. I think we have a lot to get to. <laughs> It's time for big news of the week. All right. I got nothing, so... I can no, go first. Nothing, nothing really. Probably the most important uh, event that happened in Japan over mm -hmm. the recent days. Uh, Saturday evening, local time, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck um, Japan late Saturday, um, leaving at least 30 people injured and knocking multiple power plants offline. I think over like half a million people were without power as of a couple days ago so um yeah big concerns over there uh luckily not a lot of deaths or injuries but that said this happened at the exact same location possibly even an aftershock of the 2011 fukushima earthquake which is 150 miles north of tokyo and this caused probably the second biggest nuclear disaster of all time in fukushima which is uh, with the earthquake and the tsunamis, the nuclear fallout is still like plaguing the area to this day. So right now, obviously lots of people without power, recollects a lot of bad memories from a turbulent event that's still happening. So, and actually not too long ago, there was like a big conference of, you know, advisors who just said, hey, if Japan gets hit by another 7.0 earthquake or above, like this could pose a serious threat to the region. And what do you know, this is a 7.3 out of the 9.0 on the Richter scale. So obviously big concerns. Luckily, no tsunamis warnings yet, but something that people should be aware of. And if there's any relief efforts, give it give it your time and attention and see see what's going on over there. Because this, this is a big situation. Was this, my mom was telling me about this last night. Uh, I was talking to her on the phone. She was like, oh my God, I'm watching this on the news. Mm -hmm. um, was this a uh, an offshore or onshore earthquake? This was offshore. Okay, just like the last one. Correct. Yeah, doesn't the Richter scale go to 10? Mm, it might. It might go, like, up through 9. Because I, I think we have had earthquakes higher than a 9. Oh, and it says 0 to 9. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, and the mm. one in 2011 was a 9, and so this is Damn. less than that, and obviously this doesn't have the tsunamis, but nonetheless, this is already, like, a very fragile, delicate area, so just... No, not not the best. You know, I just feel bad for people that live in Japan when stuff like this happens because having visited Japan, honestly, right after the last earthquake happened, I was in Japan um, within enough time to actually experience like, like escalators being off and stuff in Tokyo, um, you know, to conserve energy. <clears throat> and then living in Japan for two years, you, 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 you always think about this that earthquake that happened, you know, 10 years ago. And you always wonder, when is the next earthquake? And it's always a very um, emotionally sort of damaging thing for, I'm sure, for people that live in Japan. But even for me, just being there, thinking, like, earth earthquakes all the time. Like, honestly, probably every week, at least one earthquake a week. And you always wonder, is this going to be the one? Like, is this the moment? Like, you kind of stand there, you wait, and you wait, and you wonder... If this is like when is this if this is the earthquake when like the they're like they're shaky shaky earthquakes, and then they're like drop earthquakes and the drop earthquakes where it almost feels like the ground is falling out from under you, those are the really bad ones and you just kind of stand there and you wait and you wait for it and you just hope it doesn't like do anything, but then like <coughs> once when when like one eventually does something like this one the seven point three or the nine point zero that was years ago, it's you know it's a fearful thing to like have to want to like not know when when the next one's coming so i feel bad for sort of some people in japan i'm sure this is you know an uncomfortable reminder to them of what happened mm -hmm. so well and more positive bad. news <laughs> oh i feel <laughs> i can't just like like jump into like hey 
Oh man, just it's do just it, such Caroline. A very sad thing, but I'll do my best. Um, right. So I thought figured that we could talk about the Tokyo Anime Film Festival winners. Yay. Um, it, yay. <laughs> It's anime or animation of the year awards for works and individuals. They were announced on Friday. Uh, so keep your hands off. Azekin won the television category for works and Violet Evergarden, the movie won the animated film category. Um, and of course there were winners of individual awards. So these were all like, you know, uh, directors and uh, uh, animators and all those kind of people that uh, they took their works in general into account to give them these awards. Um, so I figured that we just go through them. Original work slash screenplay category was given to Reiko Yoshida. She worked on, uh, uh, Violet Evergarden, the movie, Liz and the Bluebird, and Ride Your Wave. So very, a uh, very good list of things that she's worked on. Um, for the directors, uh, Haruo Satozaki, who won for Demon Slayer, uh, Tales of Zestiria, uh, the X. Mm. I, I haven't heard that one though. Yep. Have you guys? <clears throat> I've I saw part I saw part of it. Hey, well, he yeah, won for but... director, and for the animator category was Akira Matsushima, who won for Demon Slayer and also Tales of Z Zeria. So, like you know, uh, I guess they worked on these shows together or movies together. Can't, yeah, shows. Uh, and apparently, uh, they the animator category was also won by Matsushima last year as well. Uh, yeah. For background color and video category it was uh, Mikiko Watanabe who also worked on Violet Evergarden in the movie Beyond the Boundary or Beyond the Boundary uh, Sound Euphonium and Liz and the Bluebird and it's actually post uh, Humus uh, and she also won last year as well uh, for the sound and performance category was Yuki Kajira I always I always have trouble pronouncing the name Yuki Kajira is that how you pronounce it yeah uh, yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah who uh, worked on Demon Slayer, uh, Fate Stay Night, Heaven's Feel, Sword Art Online Alicization, and Princess Principal, who also won last year as well. Um, so that's the the list of winners there. I just have one big quick question for Mason. Mason, how does how does it feel to know that your Azoken won the award? I mean, I mean, does it just warm you? Does it? My personal Azoken, yes, it does warm my cockles, and I uh, wow, I love your it cockles. So much. Yes, indeed. Damn. Wow, I wasn't going to go that but, far, uh, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. No, Azokin's great, and this list confirms that we really need to get the Violet Evergarden movie over here so we can watch it, because it's winning a bunch of stuff, because it has a bunch of great staff on it, so no surprise, it's good. Uh, please let me watch it. The thing is, is that I read kind of what was going to happen and like later on in the light novels, and I was not impressed by the story going after the anime that came out on Netflix. So, we'll while see. I did like Violet Evergarden, I don't know if I want to continue it. <laughs> I mean, Yuki Kajura won for uh, work on Princess Principal, which I think has like six movies lined up, and the first one just came out. Just so, insane. excited for those to start coming out as well, because that was a super rad show. Yeah, I like that show too, but honestly, I think the... I'm sorry being a Debbie down here. The ending kind of fell off for me. You know, I really liked it in the beginning to the half part of the show. And then it kind of just like. Mm, That's why we got know? movies. Maybe it'll bring it back around. Who knows? That's very uh, idealist of you, Mason. <laughs> I'm, I'm very optimistic until the second I start watching something. And then it's straight to the trash. I kind of want to watch Demon Slayer again, sort of, because it's. It's so big that I, 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 I sometimes I wonder if I miss something, you know, like um, because it because like I thought it was fine, but it's it's such this like phenomenon. Um, there's a news in the news break. There's a story about Demon Slayer that just blew blew me out of my blew me out of my socks. Um, blew and you out of your socks, huh? I'm wearing them and they're important because it's cold out. And uh, <laughs> and it's just like I wonder if I miss something sometimes, and I I'm tempted to go back and watch. I certainly want to watch the movie, but. I, I just sometimes I wonder, you know, and every every time there's like an award and it seems like something in, impressive about Demon Slayer is in, is in the news every week. And it just blows me away that an anime, you know, a manga slash anime that, you know, hasn't even been running for that long can have such a an unbelievable amount of popularity, you know. So mm. people, people are seeing a lot in it. So, I don't know. Anyway, so well, those are some good stories.
Yeah. Good yeah. good balance of positive and negative there. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. All right. So we it is Valentine's Day, guys, and um happy Valentine's Day, first of all. Give me so. chocolate. Give, give me Ma- chocolate now. Give Mason chocolate. I want yeah. her. I want. Reese's. Yeah, she's got. Yeah, Caroline's got Reese's cups. What the fuck? I got. <laughs> I, I just want hugs, you know. And um, so we are actually going to play uh, the anime dating game today, right? Is that right, Caroline? Yes, I was trying to think of a better name for it because the dating game, as it originally, you know, the the actual dating game TV show is. Not quite like this. This is more like the newlyweds game. Whatever. But I couldn't really think of a catchy name for this. So it's the anime dating game. <laughs> I like it. Thanks, so, Nate Mitsugi. So do we have our contestants ready? We do. Okay. So I'm going to switch over the switch over the image. Uh, well, should we reintroduce our couple here? Because they kind of didn't hear it. <laughs> Uh, just send it. They'll figure it out. Okay, well, here's Cherry Bun and Gorex Grindex Goku. They're in a relationship, been together for about three years, um, and they both love anime and video games. Oh Yay! <laughs> Yay, love day! <laughs> Did you guys have any Valentine's Day plans other than this, or was is this your, like, your date here? Oh, uh, nothing really other than this. I've just been spending the day. I've been watching her play Genshin all day. It's been a nice day so far. Isn't that Aww. romantic? <laughs> well, we're glad could... to have you about... to, to spend your Valentine's Day here. <laughs> How about some snuggles? You know, isn't it nice just to kind of snuggle up when it's all snowing outside? and and uh... yeah, that, that absolutely comes later on. Oh. Aww. That's so cute. So cute. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, this is a new game, so hopefully it works as well as we planned it. And about one day, we we were talking like we we had to plan this all out. So, um, right, let's get to it. So the main question is: Do you know your other half as well as you think you do? This game will reveal how well you know, understand each other's anime obsession, and nothing's better than a little competition. You were both individually asked five questions before this game, and we took down your answers, and now it's time for both of you to prove your devotion to your love and to your anime. Da -da. So, we actually asked you to put something on the line here because you will be competing against oh, each shit. other. We asked you to bet something. Like, it could be buying dinner next or having to watch an anime of the winner's choice or something like that. But it's up to you. So, will you bet anything? Uh, I think the only thing we could really come up with was that simple one of picking who gets to pick what's to watch tonight. I like that. So, do you have an anime in mind for each of you? Um, well, I think I will make her watch the new season of Dr. Stone. Yeah! Subtitled anime, and I don't want her to win. Oh, come on. You know. <laughs> Called out. I like it. Yeah. I am 10 billion. I am 10 billion percent sure that was the right That was the right bet to make. Absolutely. <laughs> How about you, Cherry Bun? And if it was up to me, he's watching every single episode of Naruto. Oh, oh my God. God! Good choice. Good oh my. choice. Now it's Shippuden also, or just regular Naruto? All Naruto, Shippuden, the whole, the whole stretch. Okay. I like that. By that, I think she's <laughs> locking him into a relationship for at least like seven months. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, good. You, this is a very good strategy. You have to appreciate the stakes here. So Goku says my girl has to watch Doctor Stone season two, which is a mere eleven episodes. If I win this game, and she goes for the jugular with the the seven hundred plus episodes of Naruto, dude, the stakes are real here. Now, yeah. Cherry Bun, are you saying that you actually want to watch all of the filler episodes, or is he just gonna have to watch it on his own? Um, you have to have the filler episodes. Don't you want to be depressed with Naruto when he's sitting there and, like, he's sad in the corner and everyone hates him? You feel that, too. It's what brings up the feels later on in Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning on watching it alongside with him every episode or just having him go at it? Oh, I'll watch it with him. I love She's that show. much always watching Naruto anyway, so it won't be much different for her. In life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so now you have a bet put in place, so whoever wins the game today will have their anime of their choice watched. Uh, but we also have a, a little contest for our, you know, our podcast here. If you get a certain amount of points, where actually, uh, how many are we doing? If you get 12 points combined between the two of you, you will win a prize from us. Ooh. Thank yeah. you. You all know Sounds the prop. lovely. <laughs> so basically, you are competing against each other, but you're also working together. Um, and we have a little bit of a system, a point system. If you get the correct answer on the first try, you get three points. If you get on the mm. second try, you get two points. And you use your last try and you get the answer correct, you get one point. And if you don't get the answer correct at all, of course, you get zero. Because we know sometimes these questions can get a little bit hard, I think. So we're going to go do, we're going to do it like that. I will keep score. You will? Okay. Um, so let's get started. Woo! Now, what was their first anime? And we have the answers from both of you. So um, let's at, let's go first with Gore X Grind X Goku. What was Cherry Bun's first anime? Uh, I'm not positive, but I know it's one of her favorites, and I feel like it's old enough, so I would say Fruits Basket. That would be incorrect. Oh. So you lost your chance at three points here. Try for two points. Mm. What's your second guess? Pokemon? That is also incorrect. Oh, no. <laughs> uh -oh. You have one chance left on this question. For one point, what was their first anime? Uh, Dragon Ball Z would be my third guess. She wrote down Dragon Ball, but is that... I'll allow it. I'll allow yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Woo! -hoo! You get All one right, point so, so far. Now... You're, lu you're, you're lucky you got that one right, my man. <laughs> <laughs> now, for Cherry Bun, what was Gorex Grind's X Goku's first anime? Ooh, after that, I have the Sunday Spookies. Um, Sailor <laughs> Moon? Incorrect. Mm. Second choice? Was it Dragon Ball? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You got two points, and that's one point more than Goku has right now. Let's go into our second question. What anime world would they want to live in? So, Gora X Grind X Goku. I'm going to just call you Goku from now on. What no, was... Let's call him Triple G. <laughs> Triple G. <laughs> Triple G with two X's. What anime world would Cherry Bun want to live in? I'm fairly confident she's told me a million times that she oh. wants to live in fairy tale world. That would be correct. <laughs> you get three points for that. I'm back. Yeah, that, that was a nice uh, recovery, you know, after yeah, that. Yeah, good left. job. That was the yeah. one I was most confident about, honestly. So, so I mean, anime, watching anime is all fun and games because it's like we all enjoy it, and I understand that watching all 700 episodes of Naruto is a little punitive, but... Really, love is at stake in some ways. So, <laughs> yeah. What if they break up over this? <laughs> I, 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 I would feel Ooh. real bad. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> well, I mean, at the very least, if Cherry Bun wins, you know, you got to watch the 700 episodes of Naruto. So, it will be safe until then. <laughs> I want to know who. I want to know who who the who the Twitch is pulling for. If people on Twitch want to shout yeah, out, yeah, let us know, guys. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. So, <laughs> um. Right, so let's move on to Cherry Bun. What world would Triple G want to live in? Hello? We lost her. We lost her. No! Sorry, my headphones fell. <laughs> <laughs> She's just stalling for time. She just. <laughs> so let me repeat the question then. Uh, what world would Triple G want to live in? I also wrote fairy tale world. That would be incorrect. Mm. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, the My Hero World. Also incorrect. Mm. Um, I'll give you that. And your last chance here. Pokemon World. Incorrect. Mm. Sorry to say that he answered Soul Eater. I want to well, go to Death Academy. I was going to say, do you just like really cool looking moons? Like, why'd you choose Soul Eater? I just love it. I just, I just want to go there. I want to be a student there. I get you. That, that show just beats me the right way. Do so I have... far, I've seen 
one person rooting for Goku, all of Naruto is a little bit too much, they say. <laughs> that is pretty rough. A little bit. Um, now, what? let's move on to our third question. Triple G, if Cherry Bun had only one anime to watch for a year, what would it be? I'm going to guess Naruto. <laughs> and you would be correct. <laughs> oh. Wow. That's a... If, based on the prior conversations in the game, I feel like that I feel yeah. like that one was led a little bit. But you know, what are you I gonna mean, do? They gave away as as much as they wanted to. That's so, true. So, not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on to Cherry Bun. If uh, Triple G had only one anime to watch for a year, what would it be? Oh. I have like four of them, so I'm just gonna throw them out. I'm gonna say fairy tale again. You'd be I correct. Know one of them Thank you. I knew one of them was <laughs> Wow. Do you guys watch a lot of? Do you guys watch a lot of anime together? Like, do you? We watch a lot of anime and mostly shonen a lot together. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Turibun wants to live in fairy tale world, and Triple G just wants to watch fairy tale all day. That seems like a pretty good match. <laughs> See, with that question, I just had to think of which, like, what was the longest show that I'd be able to put up with. <laughs> and it's not Naruto. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, should we, can we get uh, an update on the scores here, Mason? Or, or is it Mitsugi who's taking score? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm keeping the score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're playing all the drops today, baby. Yeah, so the score, right? Oh, the score right now, Goku leading the leading the way with seven points for seven Dragon Balls. I see what you did there, Goku. That was nice. And we also have Cherry Bun behind but not out of the race with only five points. And they have a combined 12 points as a team. So they've so. already won our prize here. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you're doing way better than I expected. I was like, what? This is a hard game, but you guys are knocking it out of the park. We watch too much anime together. This is such a hard game. <laughs> so, so I, so I have a question here. So, um, because this is, you know, lo Valentine's Day and everything's all lovey, and so you, you watch a lot of uh, shonen together, and of course, I know that everyone has like their favorite shonen shows. Uh, for me personally, like Dragon Ball is probably the most nostalgic show uh, that I've ever seen because it's much just important to my childhood. But um, like uh, my girlfriend and I also watch, we watched all of Dr. Stone last year and we watch it this year and we do those recap episodes that we've been putting out every week. And that's a show that we enjoy together. So you guys all have, each have your individual favorite shonen shows, but what what would you say is the shonen show that you both, like, connected on the most and, like, really enjoyed watching together, like, as a couple? That's a hard question. <laughs> Kobayashi? <laughs> we really like that yeah, one. Yeah, that's one that we watched really early on that probably Kobayashi. That's one that we both liked a lot, like, earlier in our relationship. Maid Dragon? Aww. Yes. Aww. You guys, like feel like the uh like the bromance that happened there between the two like gamers who just like hung out all the time <laughs> so love precious that i love that <laughs> best characters honestly so good <laughs> so shall we continue with our game i'm kind of so. curious i'm kind of curious like like we're all adults here like what would you say is like the number one anime that leads to like more fun things after you're watching your anime. Like, what is the what a question? What is the number one like Netflix and chill anime? What do you? What would you think? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm only yeah, bringing. I'm, the, I'm only bringing the heat. You know. I mean, There's uh, no hentai on Netflix. I know that. So. Well, there should be. Fair. <laughs> well, well, I guess if they don't. Hurry. I don't know if you have an actual answer or not. <laughs> if you come up with a better one, if you come up with an answer, I want to know what it is. I'm, I'm trying to think. Of, that's a tough one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they're they, they're tongue tied and shocked by my by my inquisition. So <laughs> it wasn't back to very you. Out of the blue question, Mr. Not Keith. shocked, <laughs> just not quick on the spot. That's all, sir. <laughs> back to you, Try Caroline. To Try to sing any boring anime to just stop it. <laughs> just, <laughs> you don't have to watch it anymore. So, back to the game? Back yeah, to the game. back to the game. 
Yeah, because I didn't want to stop conversation. But uh, yeah. Number question number four: What anime character would they cheat on you for? Now we're bringing up an important question. Uh -oh. So, Triple G, who would Cherry Bun cheat on you for? Mm. Oh, I know it's somebody from Fruits Basket, so I'm gonna guess <laughs> Keo. Is it Keo? It is not. Oh. <laughs> What's your second choice? Hatsuharu. It is Hatsuharu. Oh, that... That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Like of, out of all the characters in the world, you you we discuss these things more. <laughs> <laughs> already narrowed it down to fruits basket and then you narrowed it down after two people you've li you've literally had the conversation of like hey goku what <laughs> like you know if it came to that what like what anime character would you cheat on me with like this conversation these types of conversations have happened like late at night over like a, a bowl of ramen you know i mean i don't like ramen i know that's blasphemous but the conversation is absolutely no wrong. way <laughs> That's awful. I'm sorry. Get out I'm of not, this I'm room. Literally breaks my heart. Breaks <laughs> so what is it about ramen, though? I mean, like, you don't like ramen. I mean, I just ate ramen the other day. So. You, I just don't like wet noodles. It's a You're a wet thing. noodle. I know, I'm like a child. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad. Oh, my God. I mean, that's. But almost all noodle, all noodles are wet. That's how they become noodles. You don't like noodles with broth. Not Do you like soup? soup? Yeah. Uh, yeah, not with noodles in it, though. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> soup noodles in it. That, that was your one out. <laughs> what you want, sorry. What the frick? How are you dating him? <laughs> he doesn't like spaghetti. He'll only eat the <gasps> fat pastas, like big rigatonis or whatever. Ooh, I do like them thick pastas. That's the, the only way to go. Give me the fettuccines and linguinis. We are so off like track. <laughs> You you just have you just haven't eaten ramen, trap trap shoulder to shoulder between Mason and I at a ramen shop. Uh, That's you know, true. I, called, have not, I have not had that experience. Called Mutakia, out in the middle of the snow. You waited for two damn hours in the snow to eat ramen. No, I'm nestled, I'm nestled up next to Mitz and Mason. Mm. The, I, I, the real ramen was the friends we made along the way. That kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> my God. that was beautiful. <laughs> And that was beautiful, amazing. <laughs> now let's ask, let's ask Cherry Bun the question: What anime character would Triple G cheat on you on cheat on you for? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Gray Full Buster. That would be correct. Unbelievable. That is pretty unbelievable. <laughs> These were definitely in your Twitter bios, right? Like you're like, hey, I'm Goku. I'm looking for an outgoing anime girl, just so. Warm my heart. Uh, by the way, if it ever happens, though, I will cheat on you with Gray Full Buster. Hope you're cool with that winky face. Like, was that was that the bio? Just, I mean, when you're two anime fans together, these are just conversations that come up sometimes. It's just like known. we've definitely watched like like Fairy Tale together, and we've always been like, oh my god, swooning over them. Exactly. And it would just got into the conversations of that. And of course, we watch Fruits Basket together because that's my favorite anime. And then the swoons come on. The swoons hit you hard. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there an is there an anime character that you would both, you know? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's a she, spicy question. Wow, she, it she, is a spicy Haru question. So Mitsuki can have been the only one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, more specifically, I think she just asked if you were to introduce a third part, a third person into your relationship as in a menage a trois, as they would say, as in, from an anime. I mean, I believe that's yeah. what you asked. That's a very risque yeah. question. Bold. I what? feel like <laughs> we both like the same people that we both picked. So just like, what's an extra person? Come on. Exactly. They can both come. All, it's just all four of us. Right. Together. It's all love here. Would, would Hatsuhara wow. fit in here? Absolutely. <laughs> How about Gray? Oh, definitely. Okay. Well, it looks like you can have a menage a quad or something. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest for a question like that. We we gotta have these guys come in. I mean, oh, oh the children love it. They the love it. it. <laughs> They're loving I'm so it. So happy to please the children. They're loving it. <laughs> the children specifically <laughs> loved that question. <laughs> um. So let's complete the game here. Wait, wait, let's give it an update on the scores, Ma or Mitsuki. Yeah, of course. So it's very important to know that uh, Goku has approximately nine points in the game. 
approximately. That's exactly how many points he has. Nine okay, points. Okay, good. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and Cherry Bun is right behind him with eight points. Oh. So I would say that if you get if you only get one point, do we have a do we have a tiebreaker procedure? You know we don't, but we can always just come up with another question. Mm. It, it should be too, it should, it'll be okay. We'll make we'll, it we'll, work. Actually, we'll ask the the Twitch uh, stream to give us a question. How about that? <laughs> All right, give us a question now, then, in anticipation of a possible tie. I will say that Goku needs two points to not lose the game and to not be subjected to Naruto. Naruto likes <laughs> Naruto likes ramen, by the way. So yeah, this is not gonna be good for him. There's a lot of ramen in that show. <laughs> there is. I do like Naruto. I don't. I don't want to be totally trash in Naruto. Just it's a lot. <laughs> well, it's not really the it's not really the content of Naruto that's the issue. It's the length of, <laughs> of two hundred and sixty <laughs> hours of your life is on the line right now. It would be one thing if she was not requiring filler, but she is. So, and once you get to the infinite like filler arc, that it's gonna kill you. I almost did not make it out of that. <laughs> dark times. It was a very dark time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was very early in my anime watching career, so I did not understand the idea of filler, and then I just watched all of Naruto, and it was not a good idea. <laughs> I am ashamed of myself <laughs> for that time. Let's move on. What anime sequel do they want to see the most? And oh. specifically, this this does not have to be a feasible sequel. Like, it doesn't have to, like, if any show... What would they want to see more of? So, Gorex, Grindex, Goku, what does Cherry Bun want a sequel to? This is the one I'm least confident about. I don't know. Yeah, if this one's a hard one. A show does it doesn't have to be a show that's only had one season, correct? Just one that they want another season for. Yeah. I'm gonna guess Fruits Basket, right? <laughs> more Fruits Basket. That would be incorrect. Oh, um, this one's so tough. It is. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe another season of My Roommate is a Cat? Do <laughs> you think we should give him a hint, Cherry Bun? Oh. Uh, mm. ooh, I don't think ooh. we should do hints. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. I just I'm thought I'd bring it up. Here. Your last chance. What anime I sequel do they want to see? No idea. Maybe more... Tokyo Ghoul. Nope. Oh, that was sorry. closer, though. That was closer. Do you even love me? <gasps> <laughs> oh, God. Cue slapping <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting Fs in the chat. That's <laughs> it. Oh. Ouch. I'm sorry to let you down. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was Death Note. Oh, I should have known. She's, I should have known that. That was terrible. Okay. <laughs> so, You'll be her... here, you're going to be hearing about it all evening, my friend. <laughs> you're going to be hearing about, about it all 700 episodes. Oh, Happy no. Valentine's about Day. To. About to. Before every episode, oh. she just turns to him. Oh, oh, more, more Death Note? Oh, what about that, you say? <laughs> Play. Now, let's go to Cherry Bunny, who only needs one more point to at least tie it up. That's right. Two points to win. It's butthole puckering. What anime sequel does Triple G want to see the most? I'm going to have to say Samurai Champloo. Nope. Mm, oh, but that's a good answer. Mm. That's a good guess. <laughs> um, Mob Psycho? No. Mm. Oh. You can now no longer win the game, only to tie. Oh, bated breath. Hopes and dreams are hanging in the balance. Relationships, the future. Mm. Man, Grand this question oh. is hard. And for I'm your, sorry. This is super hard. Especially and for your for parents, Otaku. And for your parents, grandchildren. It's all hanging in the balance, I right here. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Oh wow, you guys are I'm spooked now. Oh, I'm just yeah, don't scare her. <laughs> uh, I know I'm getting the wrong paranoia agent. That's oh. a good guess. Mm. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> Rudakoi. Man, man, ending in a fight now. <laughs>
Hey, they both didn't know the answer, so I don't think there will be a fight. I think the, the grandchildren are saved. Mom and mom and dad are like, whew, that one was close. Oh, my God. And, and Monat in the chat is screaming out, yes, my man is free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how does it feel, uh, Goku, that you will not have to watch all of Naruto, but Cherry Bun will have to watch uh, Dr. Stone Season 2? I feel a tremendous weight lifted off of me. She's gonna like the sh she liked the first season. She's gotta deal with subs. That's all it is. I, I let her light here. <laughs> this is the way to indoctrinate her into watching subs. It is. It's very. Once you've watched subs, you never go back, it. Cherry. Uh, Doctor... The only show I watch subs with him is Kaguya-sama. I don't mind that. Like for some reason, the voices make it a lot cuter and it puts emphasis on the cuteness in the air. <laughs> I will say that Dr. Stone is a pretty easy sub. There's not a lot of talking in Dr. Stone. It's not super talky. So I think it'll be okay. Plus, Dr. Stone is oh, so, so, so good. Yeah, that show is so good. Regardless, yeah. I was going to watch it. So I yeah. guess it's oh, yeah. a lot sooner now. Well, the final. So you're being called a mad lad. Oh, no. Oh. That sounds like a good way to describe me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for coming on to the show. You've been very good uh, guest hosts today. I will be reaching out. Oh, thank you for having fun. us. This was so fun, honestly. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> I'll be reaching out to you guys afterwards. I'll have to get you a prize, and it'll be a it'll be a collective prize. So you have to put your put your two little your two little cute hearts together and just pick something that uh, just satisfies both of you. So. No, oh, thank you, you so much. Thank it's you. been a pleasure, guys. Have a happy Valentine's Day. You guys, you too. You guys. Have a good one. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. And we're back. We have returned. Can Twitch hear us? That's always the next question. They can hear you. <laughs> Excellent. Man, that was that was a lot of fun, actually. Sorry off so cool. Rickety, but no, great guests. So glad they came on. And I think we might be looking to do potentially other future game shows with listeners uh, on like short mm -hmm. little segments. So if you're like, man, I want to get bombarded by questions and <laughs> stuff like that, uh, doors open. We'll probably come out with some method of signing up for that. So yeah, it's and maybe bring this game back too. You know, specifically not just for Valentine's Day, but maybe if you have a significant other. Maybe we can get you on the show as well. Yeah, I would say that like it's pretty easy to just put a, a universal blast out on, on Discord and find people. It's a pretty wide fishing net. And so that's just, and again, another reason to be on the Discord, even if you're not actively talking all the time or whatever. If you're there, that's enough of, uh, you know, that's that's an opportunity for you to come on the show and participate in a, in a game and uh, and win a prize and and uh and just hang out yeah. it's fun yeah just just yeah just hang out and talk to us and have a good time so good idea caroline that was a fun game no problem it's a game well we have one question for you and that is our weekly trivia before we go into our news break and see if you can answer it and we'll give you the question and, or the answer in just a bit um the three main characters in log horizon are shiro Ak akatsuki and natsugu what is the subclass for each of them find out in just a bit. Mitsugi is here bringing you your anime news. Starting off with a new anime announcement from Bushi Road, who has unveiled the anime titled Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood, which is getting an original TV anime for spring 2021, so you won't have to wait long. It's going to be premiering on April 7th on various Japanese television networks, and then it will also be on Hulu. So for those of you that have Hulu, you can watch it there. The synopsis set in an alternate history of Japan in 1931, 
In the 64th year of the Meiji era, the Tokugawa shogunate was never abolished and Emperor Meiji was never restored to power. The anime will follow the activities of Nue, an organization of shogunate ex exec executioners who enforce the government. The country was, has developed its own energy source, the Dragon Vein, and has achieved a unique development in which science and the Edo period are mixed. If you are a fan of these sorts of period piece alternate history type shows, look out for The Princess of Snow and Blood coming out next season. Next up, there's been some more information on the Animator Dormitory Project, which runs a YouTube channel which reveals a lot of labor issues in the anime industry. Recently, an article popped up where a new animator in their first year had explained that they made a total of $6,000 for their entire first year of working in the anime industry, earning a low of only $130 in January. Pretty wild stuff. It looks like the average income for an animator in Japan that's been working for over one year, between the ages of 20 and 24, is $14,000, which is about a million yen less, or about $10,000 less than the average national average for that aged group. So just labor issues in Japan continue to be rampant when it comes to the anime industry. It personally leaves me wondering why people even work in anime to begin with when things are that bad. Next up, another new anime adaptation announcement, Yupopo Orishima's adult web manga, Kurogaun Ninata Kara Shinyu to Matemita, on Wednesday is going to be getting a, uh, an anime adaptation. Of course, again, I said an adult web manga. The synopsis, Shion and Nui are the dream team when it comes to hitting on women. Tonight was going to be another night of hooking up with girls for Shion, but he ended up taking a strange drug, and when he woke up, he turned into a girl. Nui came looking for Shion, but didn't recognize him and started hitting on him. So, sounds like a comedy for the most part. Director is Chokoku and the studio is Ira Weiss, which sounds like a pretty new uh, studio produced by Suesha. Or rather, that's Suesha, I guess. Uh, next up, Demon Slayer in the news, as it always is, has topped 150 million copies in circulation, making the crater just filthy freaking rich, which is an unbelievable feat for, an, for a manga that's only been running for like four years and puts it... In the, uh, about in the top 10 best-selling manga of all time, passing Slam Dunk, Bleach, Doraemon, Attack on Titan, Astro Boy, Fist of the North Star, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and has put it within striking distance of other all-time greats, including Blackjack and Detective Conan. The others, the top four being Naruto, Gogo 13, Dragon Ball, and One Piece are probably still out of reach for, for Demon Slayer, but we'll have to see. Unbelievable success for the Demon Slayer property. This is Mitsuki, and this was your anime news break. And now, time to get back to the podcast. Hey there, listeners. We just wanted to take a second and thank you for all of your support. We have received requests for additional ways that you can help support us, and we really appreciate every bit of it. Um, we wanted to come up with ways that we could also help give back, and so we decided that for the first three months of 2021, half of all of our additional support that we receive will be donated to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And many of you may already know this, or if you're new to the podcast, um, I was born with cystic fibrosis. And the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is a donor-funded, nonprofit organization that helps fund research for drugs that will help people like me live a longer life. So if you want more information on that, you can check out the cff.org website. And again, we appreciate all of your support. You're awesome. And thank you so much for listening. Hey, this is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto Uzumaki. And I am an anime addict. Use your ass, Sengan! The Anime Addicts Anonymous Podcast presents... Who do you got yeah. for number one? I have the cat bus from my neighbor Totoro. Shichi Kokoyama Hospital. Okay. That's where the cat bus goes. Yeah, house. but like, what, what are the cat bus's combat abilities? It has the most powerful oh, headlights in history on its eyeballs. It could blind you drastically with its eyeballs. That's the it can worst. Run, it can run on telephone, lo telephone wires. You know how nimble that is? That agility. Right, such agility, such grace. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Does the cat bus not have about 10 legs? Does it have 10 legs? Yes, true. Do, do cats have claws? 
Yeah. How many claws does a cat have on every paw? Oh, I don't know. Like it's five. Five. Okay. That is fifty <laughs> razor sharp blades coming but at look you. Look at it. It it's has like no... a, it's like a bowling ball covered in butcher knives. I. I it's coming at you. First. Ass. <laughs> Yeah, that cat bus is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that son of a bitch is coming at you. It does look terrifying. It's literally <laughs> screaming all the time. <laughs> it would take you to the Shichi Kokoyama Hospital after it beats your ass. <laughs> yeah, it beat your ass and take you to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And now, back to the podcast. Chopin's Raindrop Prelude. <clears throat> Majestic. Majestic. Man, what a what a drop. Good old Kazuo. What a guy. Rest yeah. in peace, as he would like to say. <laughs> His ghost still haunts the Discord to this day. I do miss going to bars and like watching sports or watching MMA with with Kazuo. He's good, uh, good people for sure. I um, can't even do that anymore. Well, in Florida, <laughs> things most things I think have been open in Florida for all. For, I think the bars have been open for a while, but but whether or not you do it is another question. Um, and anyway, getting back to the podcast, um, the three main characters in Log Horizon are Shiroe, Ats- Akatsuki, and Naotsugu. What is the th- subclass for each of them? I don't even I have no idea. Um, no, Sh- Sh- Shiroe is a scribe, Akatsuki is tra- is a tracker, and Naotsugu is border patrol. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What the hell? I, it's a okay. tough one. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even, no, I would never even guess Border Patrol is a subclass. What, what, what border? ASMR. I think there's like 90 subclasses in the show. There's a lot of them. All right. That's, um, <laughs> there's 90? Yeah, I think so. I don't think all of them are listed, but yeah, there's a lot. All right. Okay, well, as we do sometimes, we haven't done this segment in a while, but um, it is fun to do occasionally. So let's do a little bit of a, get a little lesson about what it's like to live in Japan. It's time to live big in Japan. I saw a an article, there's a link to it in the chat, and the article was talking about a new type of pizza that came out from Domino's, and it's the tapioca and dongo um dongo ball stuffed crust and um it really looks like a uh, crust stuffed with tapioca and boba pearls i guess is how we, we would probably refer to that and uh, i thought was thinking how horrible that sounds and um because like i would i, I want like a stuff a cheese stuffed with crust glazed with like garlic butter like that's what i would want first if i had if i had a stuffed crust um, and then it just got me to thinking about how um, pizza in Japan is just such a disaster. And um, <clears throat> if you ever go to live in Japan, uh, I would just assume you're not going to be having very much pizza. And if you do, it probably won't be very good. A pizza in Japan can be added to the list of things that Japan just simply cannot do, which includes Mexican food. Abandon all hope. You will not find <laughs> Mexican food anywhere. Um, if you do, it won't be good. Um, and if you do, it's probably in Tokyo and will cost a fortune. Uh, I never saw a, a reasonably a reasonably American hot dog. Hot dogs are a very like American thing, and you won't find a good one in Japan. You probably won't find what you would call a good like stack of pancakes in Japan, uh, at least for a reasonable price. They have become like trendy in Tokyo, but they charge a fortune for them for something that's just like pancake batter, which is ridiculous. And of course, uh, and also for the most part, Italian food. Caesarea does not count as Italian food, so. Japan doesn't really do much dairy in their diets. I think this is a big uh, part of why pizza just doesn't work in Japan. It's very difficult to find most types of cheeses. They love camembert cheese, even though it's horrendous. And they you will you can find like crafts craft like yellow American singles, and that's mostly it for Japan, unless you're going to like an import store or a specialty store. Um, but pizza in Japan is pretty weird, so you're get you're gonna get some strange toppings in uh, in in uh, Japan. One of the weirdest that I consistently saw on most menus was uh, mayo and corn pizza, which is not something that I really want. 
Uh, I, we already discussed the uh, the tapioca and boba stuffed crust, which is uh, very strange also. And then, of course, there's like various Japanese foods that you'd see on pizza, like sh- shiitake mushrooms, fish, natto, miso, seaweed, uh, squid, squid ink. Like I've seen black pizzas. Um, and also just like absurd pricing. So like you can get an American pizza in Japan. They do have Domino's and they have Pizza Hut and they deliver the pizzas like on like in these little motor scooters that are pretty cute. But um, the prices are ridiculous for an American pizza. And when I say an American pizza, I'm talking about like, you know, a cheese pizza with like pepperoni and sausage on it or something like that. It will easily cost you $35 for a large pizza from like a Pizza Hut in Japan. Plus, plus potential fees for like delivery if you get it delivered. Um, it's something I did once and, you know, ultimately decided that it wasn't really worth it to, uh, to order pizza in Japan, like just in general. So now there are places in Japan to eat pizza. You can go to Shakey's Pizza. That's a, that's a buffet. Um, they will have tolerable pizza at Shakey's Pizza. It's, it's not really good probably from by most standards, but there's usually, like, an abundance of types of pizza, so they'll have, like, your weird Japanese stuff, like the kumeo and corn, and then you'll, you'll be able to find, like, some pizza that has something that, remember, that resembles, like, pepperoni. And they will certainly have just, like, a cheese pizza, for sure. Uh, I already mentioned the Domino's and Pizza Hut. And then there's, like, various small boutiques or independent shops where you'll be able to get, uh, like, Japanese-style pizza. But if you're like me, you probably won't, probably won't want that. Um... Pizza is like one of the things like like I, I do a cheat a cheat day every week for like my macro counting and my diet and um, we basically rotate through like pizza, Mexican food and Chinese food and pizza is like simple you know I just want like a deep dish pizza with like onions and onions pepperoni and bacon are probably my favorite toppings and it's it's a tough it's tough when you're in Japan and you can't find it now a little story for those of you that might be traveling to Japan. Um, there is, they did, they did, they did just open up three theme parks or they're going to be opening three new theme parks around Osaka, which kind of injects new reasons to go to Osaka other than just to walk down, uh, um, the, uh, Shinsaibashi street. But, um, there is a hotel in, in Osaka. It's very cheap. It's called Hotel Tayo, which means uh, sun. Tayo means sun. And it's right. And right next to the Hotel Tayo, which is, uh, honestly, it's an okay place to stay. It's, um, there's an old cafe on the corner where this old man who he's probably not alive at this point because this is like, I haven't been there in a while, quite a while and he was really old back then, but this old man would just sit behind this counter and just smoke cigarettes and make coffee with like this unbelievably elaborate array of instruments. He'd have like, it looked like a science lab in there, beakers, flasks, tubes, like little coiled things, like just crazy stuff. And, and, uh, they did have good coffee, but in addition to that, they, also had a pretty solid pizza toast. So mm. think like a Texas toast with actual tomato sauce, melted cheese, and something closely resembling pepperoni. And you could also get like a couple of hard-boiled eggs. And, and that makes a pretty solid breakfast. A coffee, a couple of hard-boiled eggs, and then a piece of thing of pizza toast for not a bad price. So if you ever stay in, near ho- in Hotel Tayo in, in Osaka, uh, I do recommend checking out that cafe next door if it's still open. And you'll be able to get a pretty, a pretty good pizza, little, little taste of pizza there. So, but uh, See, that a bagel bite. Mm. Bagel well, bites the are most extreme, like pizza adjacent breakfast item. Mm. Now, the real important question, good. the important question is for you, Caroline, is it for you? Is it bagel bites or is it pizza rolls? Um, I've called them pizza bites, but I've never would call them pizza rolls. Which one would you prefer? Between bagel bites, uh, pizza bites, and bagel rolls, probably bagel bites just comes off the tongue a lot easier than pizza bites. Which ones would which ones would you rather eat, Mason? Uh, bagel bites for sure. You guys are both. You guys can both stay. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Bagel bites aren't those like little turd burger, like hot lava containing mini hot pockets that are like pizza rolls. Those things are trash. Yeah, and I tried a hot yeah. pocket once, and it was very disappointing. There was like no oh, yeah. trip. <laughs> did it burn your? Will, will will it burn your? Will it burn my mouth? It'll destroy it did burn mouth. a little bit. <laughs> It'll be icy cold on the inside. 
<laughs> Have you ever seen the the, the, Jim, the Jim Gaff? Gaff again? Yeah, yeah. It'll destroy your mouth. <laughs> All right, so um, thanks, guys. If you ever have questions about Japan, uh, you can always ask me on, on Discord. And if you would like to submit uh, submissions to Living in Japan to hear about a specific topic from someone who lived there for a while, you can go to the mailbag section on the on our website and submit a Living in Japan, and I will discuss it for you here on the podcast. So, And with and that... speaking of mailbags... And with that, it's time for a few. It's time for an almighty anime mailbag! Anime. 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 M -m -m mailbag bag 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 bag. Yay! Um, to submit your mailbag, again, go to aapodcast.com and underneath the mailbag button, you can uh, <laughs> just send us a question, anything you'd like. Uh, like Akiko did, who writes, while listening to make it, to Mason talk about sports climbing girls. I got the impression that he's into girls with, in his words, lats or abs. What's lats? Uh, it's like your back muscle. It goes from like, hmm. yeah, it's your back muscle. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, as Mitsugi caresses it's a, the side of his. It's, a, it's under your, <laughs> it's basically under your armpit on the side. That's part of your back. Yeah. I haven't heard of it. It's, well, it's, 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 it's what you work out when you do pull-ups. Hmm. So, AAA podcast hosts, or maybe just Mason, who are you, some of your favorite buff, jacked, or otherwise athletic anime ladies? Thanks. Mitsugi? I'm not really that into buffed or jacked ladies. Um, I'd say I'm more into fit ladies, if anything. But um, So I really had a difficult time with this. One, because there aren't that many in anime. And two, because, I don't know, it's to each their own, but it's not really particularly my thing. But I guess I'd go with Bisky. Uh, or Biscuit, whatever the hell her name is, from Hunter Hunter. She's pretty cool. And uh, when she does seldom transform, she is definitely very large and jacked. So, mm. um, so do you prefer her <laughs> hulked out <laughs> mode or her regular standard I, edition? I, I prefer the regular edition of Biscuit, but I know that she's, I know that that's actually not what she really is, looks like, I think. I think she's normally the, the, uh, like the, you know, the buffed out version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caroline, you go ahead. Um, so I have three written down. I have Mikasa from Attack on Titan because she's super hot. Um, White Blood Cell from uh, Cells at Work Black because while I'm not really into like you know the you know revealing boobs and stuff just for fan service purposes, she's pretty cool and I like her. Um, and. Also from Cells at Work, the the you know original series, uh, uh, the NK Cell. She's she's pretty cool, and I like her. Okay, and she's getting her own like a lot of screen time in this new season, so I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Um, I had some of the above on my list, but uh, Maki from Fire Force, perennial mm, favorite. Um, cute. Train Operator San from Covenary of the Iron Fortress, and uh, Ayaka from How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, just to name a few. There's. There's a bunch, and yeah, it's got to have some muscle on them. So, thanks for the mail back. I appreciate it. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Avatar in the chat, the Ab Girl from D4 DJ. Yeah, she's she's pretty based as well. Today, and with that, we're gonna be doing impressions. Impression time! Believe it. A lot of a lot of Naruto on the uh, on the episode <laughs> today. <laughs> I like it. Um. Final round, last day of impressions. Like Mitch said at the top of the show, when you're hearing this, not only the uh, the poll will be live for the final three sh slots that we will be reviewing. So, if we don't pass the show you want us to talk about, head on over there to link wherever below the YouTube video where this is posted, attached to the iTunes description, wherever it is, you'll find it. It's on the Discord, and uh, vote for that. So, with that said, currently we have passed the Promise Neverland season two. Skate, Jobless Reincarnation, Horimiya, and Dr. Stone Season 2. So we have one show left. What will it be? So much suspense. So, so I much. can go first because I have two shows to talk about today. And the first one will be Log Horizon Season 3, uh, Destruction of the Round Table. We, uh, let's, let's see. So this is one of the heavy hitters in the trapped in a video game world. Um, it's one of the few worth watching, in my opinion. It has a super unique take on the interplay between players and the game. And the setting of Elder World is like this MMO 
RPG with tons of mechanics that wasn't just the usual like protagonist gets strong arc. So, I mean, it went into like economics, it went into like allegiances and partnerships, it went into food, like a whole part of this show is the establishment of food that tastes good. And I can get behind that message. And season one came out in 2013, season two came out in 2014. And then season three is now just coming out six years later. So it's been it's been a hot minute. Is it worth the wait? Uh, this was originally done by Studio Dean, or this was originally done by Satellite until Studio Dean took it over with the same director. And it's odd because seasons one and three are on Funimation. Season two is on Crunchyroll, but they just call it Log Horizon. They have indication that it's season two. So if you boot up your Crunchyroll, like, I want to give Log Horizon the shot, uh... It's not there. It's not there until season two. So be warned of that. So first things first, Log Horizon season three does not have database as the opening. We can just play the fail drop now, canceled, and that's it. That's end of the discussion. Big sad. So full disclosure, I watched actually all of season two this past week to prepare for this impression. And honestly, it really wasn't my thing. Ignoring the, the pacing issues and awful visuals and abysmal characters, the problem is that the world wasn't as integrated and well like engaged with as it was in season one. It just kind of became very explanatory. And because I really didn't enjoy season two, that carried over into season three, which really didn't change how I really feel. Like I like how they've kind of shifted to politics and the allegiance of guilds and like how it's beginning to fracture. But beyond that, like the show is just missing so much of what made season one great. It doesn't have the adventuring or game mechanics or character growth and never really had great Sakuga or animation, but it's even worse now. So when all that's left is politics and not very compelling politics, I've had a hard time motivating myself to keep on watching that. The directing is kind of disjointed and season two ended with so many cliffhanger questions that needed to be answered in season three and it really doesn't seem like they're making much of an effort to get to those answers. So it just keeps on throwing more characters on top while leaving the other ones to just kind of melt away into the background. And while I know this is a very beloved franchise and a lot of people love the show, and if you like everything that came prior, you'll probably keep on digging season three. But right now it just seems to be treading water, and I feel like the best days of the series are in the past. And like I said, the OP isn't database, so I will not be passing the show because it just wasn't my thing. Oh, Womp womp. Sad. Well, in my case, I would have had to watch the first two seasons in order just to review Log Horizon, so I'm not entirely... I'm, I'm planning on watching Log Horizon, but... And it is worth watching. On it, it's kind of not Season one is definitely worth the watch, so give that a shot at least if you have been thinking oh, yeah. about getting into the series. I will eventually watch it at some point. So, um, shall I go next? Sure. So today I am going to be talking about B Stars season two, which is still a pretty great show, and the animation is still really good. It's inventive, and it's some of the best CG that you'll probably see, other than like, well, like in addition to you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, the 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 jewel one. Hoseki no Kuni. Yes, that one. Same uh, same that- studio. Yeah, so you know that they are probably the like it's orange, right? The studio, yeah, they're probably the best in CG. And you know, even with this with this show, I know a lot of people will think of CG and like, Ugh, in like any show in CG is automatically inferior to any other type of animation. But this one is like, you would not even really tell the difference because it's it's that good, you know. Um, now the mystery is unraveling, so that's good. Uh, We might actually find out who killed the alpaca this season. (laughs) Um, So that's good. There is a possibility of a training arc, I think. Maybe. Possibly. Lego C is is still best boy. Um, But the thing is, even though I'm really enjoying Beastars, I can't pass it. (laughs) Because I've already used both of my locks already. Um, It it honestly came down between Beastars and Horimiya. And I had already passed... uh, you know, Promised Neverland season two. I cannot justify passing two sequel seasons with both of my locks. And I love Hori Mia, so I'm sorry. I can't not pass it. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't think it'll matter because I'm pretty sure that with three with three anime to be picked by the listeners, it's probably coming back anyway. 
So I hope so. Yeah, you're probably pretty safe. It's. I mean, it'll probably be, it'll probably be all sequels that get voted in. You know, given the season. So. All right, I guess I'm up. It's time for ReZero season two. Season two, part two, I should say. Um, if you were to look on Mal at the current season, ReZero season uh, two, part two is one of the most watched shows of the season, and it is the second highest rated show of the season with an 8.7, which is pretty pretty strong. Um, and it's continuing the sanctuary arc of the story um, where you know I was, I was fairly bored with the sanctuary arc, you know, when it was wrapping up the last time because it just was seemed like it wasn't really going anywhere. And the sanctuary arc is more or less like this place where, um, like people can't leave the sanctuary. It's like this this like village in the forest. I'm not gonna get like into the deep like rezero lore or, or sorry, or I'm gonna try to and I'm gonna try to avoid spoilers from season from the first half of the season. But like they're trapped in this like village. In this forest, there's like a force field, and in order to in order to escape and to have the uh, the barrier taken down, like you have to pass these like series of tests that you have to go through that are very psychologically like difficult. Like they would leave you in a a messed up like mental state probably because they make you do things like confront your your worst demons and stuff like that. And and uh, you know, Re Zero is what it is. I mean, at this point, it's it's a show with you know Subadu who is constantly like building relationships with people and sort of retrying as he gets killed like over and over again try just trying to get trying to work his way through like these impossible scenarios um with with like very little very little damage to like him to like the people around him and it's it's very much it's very much like it's very much like Higurashi no Nakukoroni like honestly if if in my opinion where they're you know they're you're, you're, you're trying to work your way through like and, and, you know an event where there's like 500 like thousands of possible outcomes and like maybe only one of those like very perfect uh, you know chains of events would actually get you out of the situation that you're in and and you know that's kind of the story that ReZero is and honestly the first three episodes of the second season were I thought extremely strong I thought that they were stronger than most of what I saw in the in the last season there was some pretty impressive like action scenes that uh, involved like the the sort of like quote unquote villain of the uh, of the season I guess as, I guess you, as, as you would say he's he's like he's like a, I can't remember his name he's like a guy he's like half he's like half uh, like tiger basically he's a like a half breed um, you know like half man half beast type that it can transform and he's you know he they kind of have to stand up to him and uh, you know. He's a guy that that doesn't want the sanctuary to be taken down for various reasons that I won't get into because it's not really important. But you know he fights for his convictions. Meanwhile, Subodu is fighting for his own convictions, and everybody has like their own motivations. And seeing um, that character's backstory and you know his reasons for for not wanting to leave the sanctuary. And just the action scene that took place to like sort of wrap up or make a make a massive stride towards like wrapping up the story arc. Really, I thought it was quite good. Um, and honestly, this was probably by a pretty easy margin, probably the second best show that I watched. And I had a lot of good shows, you know. Uh, it it might have been the best show that I watched, but it's uh it's it's a, it's a situation where. To be perfectly honest, while ReZero is good and it, and always has been and it continues to be good, it's a, it's it's a situation where, um, you know, there's just too many good things to pass, and we already covered ReZero twice on this podcast, so you know I'm not gonna pass ReZero season two. I already used both my passes, so everyone knows I'm not gonna pass this one. But I would say that um. You know, next to Attack on Titan season two, this is the best. This this is the best show that I've seen of the season. Uh, n- honestly, nothing is even close to Attack on Titan the final season. But um, if there was a show that was close for me, it's this one. But uh, you know, we've covered it before on the podcast. And if you guys really want us to cover the the, the this the rest of season two, you can vote for it in the, in the listener choice poll. You know, but uh, you know, I don't really feel the need to pass three zero yet again. So I will review it for you guys, 
but I don't really think it's really necessary for us to cover the the show um, yet again. I would just merely say that it is fantastic, and if you've seen ReZero up up until this point, you can you know continue to enjoy it. If you haven't seen ReZero, you have absolutely no not even a, a small prayer of understanding what the hell is going on. So don't even bother. Uh, but you should maybe just go back and watch watch the uh, the first season and then the second half of the, or the first half of the second season because ReZero is one of the better isekai shows out there. So that's pretty much the long and short of it. So I definitely recommend the show. I um you know <laughs> an eight point seven doesn't lie you know it it is it's being it's gonna get listener choice picked I mean it's being watched by li- literally everybody so <laughs> there's like almost nobody not watching ReZero season two so it has four hundred thousand current viewers on Mal which puts it number amazingly number six that's three hundred eighteen thousand oh. it's right up there with the slime anime so. It's o- o- only o- only passed up by the slime anime, Hoodie Mia, uh, Promise Neverland, Attack on Titan, and Doctor Stone. Those are the only shows that are being watched more than this one. And you know, we've already pa- we've passed or <laughs> we've passed all of those, or they're not eligible. So it's definitely going to get picked. So that's why I didn't pass Rezero. I know it's coming back. <clears throat> it Cra- is what crazy, it is. Crazy that Hoodie Mia is like hanging with those for not being like a sequel. It's pretty much the only show up there that's not a sequel. Heck that yeah. makes it really worth watching, so go ahead and watch it. <laughs> Best we'll be couple. talking about it. <laughs> Good Valentine's Day show, because it is very cute. All right, what else do we got? There you go. The last impression of the season is Wonder Egg Priority. And this was my number one pick uh, many moons ago. And in the words of Miyamura, it's egg time. So yes. <laughs> we always talk about shows that we are hyped for, it's either sequels to earlier favorites, adaptations of manga that we love, or shonen or big name blockbusters that the community is in a frenzy over. Um, but honestly, it's the originals that come out of nowhere that is what I look forward to, that where I have no expectations and they're uninhibited by like source or anything. Like Great Pretender, ID Invaded, Brand New Animal, like Decadence from last year. Like even if I don't always enjoy them, I always make an effort to watch them because they're usually just teeming with creativity. So when I saw that Cloverworks was putting out an original under blooming director Shin Wakabayashi uh, paired with like great designs and the promotional artwork, I knew I had to pick the show up. So this show starts off odd. Our MC is talking to like some animatronic looking bug and it doesn't get less odd because within minutes we are on our way to like talking toilet paper and humans hatching out of eggs. Like, this show gets <laughs> wild the whole time. And the show follows our main character, a 14-year-old I, fittingly, talking about Valentine's Day and love, um, who is a shut-in due to bullying and like the corresponding incidents that stem from it. And I essentially gets roped into going on these supernatural psychological vision quests to protect the souls of those who are like undergoing some sort of trauma in their life. Think of like the palaces in Persona where... She's going in to defend these souls who are being attacked by some sort of issue. And I and her victim kind of run through the dreamy halls of their school or wherever situation they find themselves, searching for the source of pain to tackle it. As she like wields like a Sora-esque keyblade thing. Um, and essentially along the way, other soul protectors, if you want to call them that, join the cause, all of which are suffering and broken in some harrowing way so think of a fusion of flip flappers madoka and boogie pop all mixing around in there and visually the show is super cool there's tons of attention to the composition and depth and the show just looks just has a lot of meaning in the shots while also being very pleasing to look at and the effects are usually very good such as the lighting and can sometimes falter when it comes to the cg where they use to show these manifestations of abnormal uh, evils, which give them an otherworldly vibe, which will throw some people off and be a sticking point. But overall, I can kind of look past it. But for the most part, the show looks fantastic. Uh, most of the fight sequences are really splendid. Besides a couple awkward jump cuts, it looks good. I can't stress that enough. Um, it sounds great. There's like this pulsating electronic instrumentation, which adds to that like unnatural tension and this like laid back OP with a mix of like photography that kind of brings to mind like Sarit and Zanmai 
like the show looks happy and fun and poppy and vibrant, but there's just like other side picnic, this undercurrent of unease and mystery, because this is a very challenging show. There's a lot of illusions, metaphor. Um, they're tackling issues like suicide, bullying, sexuality, standing up for others and the guilt when you don't do that. Um, the show is juggling all of this. And at the end, it will its performance to make a point and kind of hold it all together is the big challenge that the show has set up for itself. So it's got a high bar to clear, but it seems to be off to a good start. Um, the show is kind of dancing exuberantly underneath a veil and this is definitely a show that's going to be wanting to be rewatched to get all the clues and symbolism and i think there's just it's very dense and there's a lot to unpack which is the kind of show i enjoy if you like these kind of shows um don't skip out on it i certainly won't be and this could be possibly a season defining show one that we look back and we're like oh what came out in winter 2021 oh yeah that wonder egg show like, I think it might be that good. So I will be passing it. I've got lots of high hopes for this. And I hope if you've started watching it, you're enjoying the ride so far. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. You lock it up. Lock it up. And you can watch it on Funimation. We now have all of our shows. Hey. <laughs> we did it. So once again, Promise Neverland Season 2, Skate, Jobless Reincarnation, Horimiya, Dr. Stone Season 2, and Wonder Egg Priority. But, you know, now's our chance. Listeners, you're going to have this, all the shows from the season to vote on. But we're going to give our last-ditch bid. What shows, Mitts, do you think people should pass? What do you recommend? Well, I think rather than talk about what uh, shows I think people should pass, I think I'm just going to predict the ones that I think that they will okay. pass. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's anything all that groundbreaking, you know. If I if I am to pull up like this, the current season of shows here and just like you know again sorted by popularity, I think it's pretty easily predictable. It's not going to be anything all that interesting. I think the slime anime will get picked. Um, I think that Re Zero season two part two will get picked, and and then the and then the third one's a little more interesting. You know, I think that um, actually. You'd be surprised how far down B Star season two is on the list of people watching it. However, <clears throat> on this podcast, I think B Stars is very popular. Uh, you know, it's like not even it's like barely even in the top ten while well, I'm a most watched show of the season. But so if I were to go by number of people watching, it would be, it would probably be that other Isekai show that uh whatever the fuck this thing's called. The uh jobless reincarnation. Well that but, one was <clears throat> passed oh did we pass that yeah we passed yeah. that one we'll, oh. we'll, we'll see if that was a mistake or not but it was passed. <laughs> and i wonder if, if anything, these stars it's is Mason's just, fault it always blame me just that's the default setting on this podcast i wonder if b stars like lower popularity is because of netflix jail yeah i, I have a feeling it's probably going to be b stars season two if i had to bet it'll be b stars it'll be slime it'll be re-zero I feel pretty. Go. I feel pretty confident that at least two of those will get picked. Caroline, how about how about yourself? What should the people be passing? Um, like what Mitsugi said, I think, or I I would like to hope that people pass uh, B Star season two because, you know, it, it's a good show, and I'm still I'm, I'm watching it. So, um, because I couldn't pass it, I certainly hope that the people will take it into consideration. But other than that, um. I guess Cells at Work Black. It's a good show. Um, we've already talked about Cells at Work as its full season, but maybe Cells at Work Black will offer some more conversation, like considering it is a bit darker and, you know, the way, like a, a very uh, hopeless kind of situation they find themselves in. And maybe it'd be a good conversation considering their uh, like work environments and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that could work. Um. I don't think any of the shows I'm about to talk about are going to be passed, but I, this is my like <laughs> last second ditch effort to recommend weird shows that people might be sleeping on otherwise. Uh, first up is a show called Pui Pui Molkar. It's like a three minute show. You can watch it on uh, YouTube. It's barely an animation. It's like stop motion, fuzzy hamster cars go around the city and it's amazing. It's adorable. It's so cute. They eat lettuce and they poop it out and it's, everything i want uh i highly recommend it um everyone should watch x-arm because it's so bad 
and ugly that every show you'll watch after that looks good. So I highly recommend mm-hmm. watching one episode of that. Uh, we probably won't pass it. Uh, Laid Back Camp Season 2 is so good. It's God Terror. It's the same vibes as uh, the other show that's really good that I'm blanking on, Kaguya-sama, where I was like, oh, Season 1's good. I don't know how good Season 2 will be, and it's even better. Wow. Uh, I'm really digging it. And finally, Vlad Love, which just officially came out today, um, is done by someone whose name should make your spine tingle and your butthole pucker. Takamamuro Oshii, OGOVA man, Ghost in the Shell, Jinro, Angel's Egg, no Kizmi, way! like Yuri, uh, I don't know, like vampire blood donating show. I don't know what it is, but it might be really interesting. So please give those shows a look and, uh, that's all I wanted to, to pitch. It, it's actually amazing how bad the score is online for X Arm. It is what spectacularly is it? awful. It's got a two. I mean, it might be uh-huh. the lowest score I've ever seen. It's wow. I mean, it's actually like conceptually, plot wise, like not the worst show of all time, but man, does it look bad. <laughs> Holy Wait, shit. Isn't, aren't they all like first time animators or something? Well, uh, maybe, probably. I don't know. I think I heard Hopefully. something. And if they are, I feel bad about making fun of them because this is like the I can't do. I can't animate for the like me, Wow, so. it's just fucking nuts. Just you know, I mean, if they're first time animators, I'm like, go, oh, you can do it, kind of thing. But I mean, I don't know for certain. I don't know. It, I, it's good for a chuckle. I wish there was a way to see like the bottom, the bottom ranked animes on here because I'm wondering if this is like the lowest score ever given. I've never seen an anime lower than a four on Mal. So the, the, for it to be a two is pretty <laughs> it's pretty unbelievable. All right. That's we it. We did, did it, it, everybody. We did it. <clears throat> Woo! Keep an eye on our Discord and our social medias for the uh, listener's po- uh, choice poll. And then you That's can right. get the last three shows onto the list. Heck yeah. Shows, Fate's right? in your hand. Yes, it is. So, shall we uh, head out up here, guys? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay. Uh, For our social media on Twitter, you can find the podcast slash me at AAA Podcast. We just talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Mitsugi is at Pope Mitsugi. Uh, Mandy is at Mandy X Mandy. And Mason is at Macy Pacey. You can also find us on Facebook, on our our Facebook group, AAA Podcast, and on Discord. You just go to the aapodcast.com, and underneath our Discord button, just click on it. It takes you to it. It's really great. So, what's uh, going into Anime Club on our Discord? We are watching Penguin Highway on the 24th, or actually, no, we're discussing Penguin Highway on the 24th. Uh, It is a movie, so it's a good watch if you have not been to Anime Club before. It's just one and done. You watch it. You join us at 10 p.m. EST on the 24th, and we just talk about it. It's fun. Good time. Mind Club will be discussing Sweat and Soap Volumes 1 through 2, Chapters 1 through 17, 10 p.m. EST, February 17th. Same deal. Read the works, jump in voice chat, and just have a great time chatting it up with us. It's a blast. It's relaxed. It's low-key, and it's Definitely worth your time. No excuses. It's really easy to join, and we'd love to see you at any club and just in the Discord in general. Real quick note: next week we're gonna be we're gonna be reviewing. Uh, since we're done with impressions now, what is it? A Dachi to Shimamura, I think. Mm-hmm. And I will not be here. I will be in Mexico, so uh, slinging tequila. So uh, <laughs> mayhem, yeah. mayhem on Jose the podcast. Jose Cuervo, Jose Cuervo. Yeah, you guys are going to like... should we have a little fun on the podcast, too? We're going to have so much fun. This is going to be <laughs> possibly the youngest average oh age <laughs> of the podcast's history. So, are you calling uh, Mitsugi old? He is. I'm implying it's okay. I'm pretty old, I mean. Old. And now I'm going to say that Mitsugi is old. <laughs> but he's... <laughs> <laughs> Chaos will reign. On that note, we are heading out. See you, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you all. Have a safe week. Peace. Happy Valentine's Day. Eat some chocolate. Mm.